George, in trying to search for the fundamental laws, um, some people would have said quantum mechanics. Uh, early, a couple centuries ago, they would have said Newtonian mechanics. Now people are talking about string theory. Uh, everybody believes that there has to be something beneath things that we're talking about as a so-called theory of everything. Well, I think you claim that no matter what they get, it's not going to be a theory of everything. Yep. Because uh, you believe that top-down causation is is in a sense non-reducible to any of that. Yes. And I, I need to understand how that could be possible. Well, the, the first point is that I think top-down causation, um, it's irrefutable that it exists. Now, an example is we're talking English. Now, why are we talking English? It's because our society, our parents and so on, uh, spoke to us in English, taught us the language, and it then got embodied in the detailed neural connections in our brain. So that's top-down from society into the detailed structures of our brain. Um, that is a fundamental form of causation which one must include into account as well as the bottom-up stuff which is beloved of the particle physicists and the others. And I have the support in saying this of someone as eminent as Phil Anderson who says that the uh, a very famous um, solid-state physicist who says that the laws of emergence of, 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 of solid-state physics are as fundamental as the laws of particle so physics. That is the key question, because emergence is a wonderful metaphor, it's a wonderful descriptor, it's a, it's a shorthand, it's a nice model, yeah. but the question is, is it fundamental? Yeah. Well, I would say it's a fundamental property of nature that emergence things can emerge. Yeah. <laughs> okay. um, and they do so um, by aggregating in such a way that what you get is more than the sum of the parts. The famous statement from Phil Anderson, more, uh, more is different. And um, what that enables to come into being is higher levels of behavior which have their own autonomy, um, independent of the lower level ones. Now at a certain level, this is what Alan Turing discovered in the case of digital computers. You can have a digital computer algorithm and you can realize it in any way you like. You can realize it in wood or in water or in electrical or... Abacus. Ab yeah, yeah, yeah. And what is happening there is that the same higher level logic is getting realized in any of these different kinds of ways. And what is happening there is it's the logic which is then... You, you're trying to implement, it's getting realized in, in, in building, uh, there's a Lego <laughs> Turing machine or a water or whatever. And so that is the thing which is actually the, the real cause and all the others are just um, phenomena which are used to make that thing happen. And so the, the question is, is given an, a, 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 uh, as much time as you want, a billion years yeah. of civilization, assuming we're here and our science continues for a billion years like it has for the last uh, a couple of centuries, um, it would be, it, it would or would not be in, in principle impossible to ever, 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 ever be able to describe those higher level activities strictly by analyzing the deep properties of the lower level. Would it ever be possible? Well, it, means, it depends if you mean the generic properties of the lower levels or the specific one. If you mean does Maxwell's equations imply, let's say, um, Darwinian evolution, the answer is no. If you, if you had uh, Maxwell's equations and, and whatever else you would need for every particle and force uh, in, in, in every brain that yeah. was associated with that thing, and you could... Predict that in some massive supercomputer. Yeah. Um, it's not impossible that you would be able to predict it in a mechanical kind of way, but you wouldn't be clarifying what the causal effects were. Because the causal effect in Darwinian evolution is survival of the fittest. Now, if you want to split that down into particles and so on going on, it is in principle possible to do that, and, but you are simply missing out what is the actual causal mechanism which so is... That's the question. Are you or are you not? If, you're, if you're understanding it totally, the, que the question is predictability. Could you ever predict that Darwin's evolution, the theory of it, can come if you analyzed every particle and every force no. prior to no, no, the answer is no, because Darwin's uh, theory depends on the concept of animals surviving or not. Uh, at the lower level, there isn't a concept of the animal or of the animal being alive or of the animal being dead. Those concepts do not exist at the lower level. So you cannot write Darwin's theory at the lower level. Maybe this will help me. Um, 
can you categorize the different kinds of top-down causation? Yeah, I've got, there are five different types which I've talked about. The first one is by constraints, setting constraints on what happens. So for instance, in a digital computer, the transistors are wired up in a very, very specific kind of way in order to give the procedure. What that does, the wiring is a higher level of structure than the level of the electrons, and it makes the electrons flow in certain causal patterns by that wiring. Our brain is the same, it's the connections there. Okay, that's the first type. The second type is um, feedback control. When you have a thermostat, you set it at a certain value, and that feedback control system makes molecules in the water speed up to a certain level, and you can change it by changing the dial in that feedback control system. That is top down from the dial down to the motion of the molecules. The third is exactly selection, of which Darwinian selection is a classic example. Animals adapt to their environment. So if you go and you look at those pictures, which you now see often of the white polar bears, they're white because they grew up in a certain environment. The brown ones in the Canadian Rockies grew up in a different environment. So the environment, that large scale structure is feeding down to the structure of the genes where there's a specific gene which turns the, 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 the fur white or brown. Um, the, the fourth kind of top-down causation starts to get interesting. When you have a feedback control system, like for instance body temperature or blood pressure, so there is a setting there. Where did that setting come from? And that setting came by adaptive selection to what would be good for the body. And so, so, that, so that level of top-down selection is selection of the goals in a feedback system. And the highest level of top-down causation is that all adaptive selection takes place on the basis of a selection criterion. For instance, if you sort out your emails and you discard the ones you don't want and you keep the ones you do, that's top-down causation sure, yeah. according to a selection criterion. Where do you get that selection criterion from? And you develop that adaptively by your experience over your lifetime. Is there any difference in the top-down causation between different categories? Uh, let me give you an example. The top-down causation in, in physics or, or um, physical chemistry uh, that, that generates it in the purely uh, inanimate world, number one. Category two is uh, top-down in, in life yeah. systems, yes, biology. Yes, yes. Yeah. And the third would be mental, uh, a, a yeah. brain consciousness. Yes. Quite. Is there any difference in the, in the uh, qualitative, obviously a lot of differences, but is there a fundamental difference in, the, in any of those three categories? Um. The, the physics one, I just want to say that the, the really hot physics one at the moment is that of topological conductors and topological uh, resistors, which is wow. the Nobel Prize yeah. a year or so ago. Um, that is, it's purely mechanical. The, the, the difference comes in in the following. As you go up from physics, where the laws of physics are controlling anything to biology, what happens is that logic comes in. So physics, the logic is, these things are going to bump into each other and certain things are going to take place. There is nothing optional about it. As soon as you hit biology, you have branching logic. I will do this if something, I will, won't do it if that. So for instance, um, little bugs creep towards poison and, and or away from poison and towards nutrients. They've got feedback control mechanisms to do that. There's an if there's a poison there, move away. If there's food, move towards it. It's the if then else branching, which distinguishes physics from biology. Okay. And that enables the biological system to react to the environment. So all biology is adapting to the environment. So the environment is feeding down into the organism and altering its behavior. And then from uh, generic biology to consciousness, mind mentality. Well, that's when you get the abstract stuff coming in, the symbolic representation. So you've now got a symbolic representation of the stuff out there. Now, I maintain that symbolic representation is abstract. So that is the level at which abstract ideas start to have causal powers, in my view.